Welcome, everybody. This is exciting to see another room full. This is our fourth Soar Without Limits show at the Brockton Public Library, this wonderful Driscoll Gallery. We're so excited to have everybody here. Um, I'm Sandy Tapalian, the co-founder and the CAO. What's a CAO? It's a Chief Artistic Officer. <laughs> of Soar Without Limits, Heal Through the Arts. Um, and where are all my artists? Let's see, I'm gonna name you, because you are the very <coughs> special people. I see Tracy Tarver's back there, do something. There you go. Um, we have <laughs> Linda Moore and Almer, right here. Where's Karen? Where's Ka oh, Karen. Karen Page Dash is right here. <laughs> Victoria. Where is Victoria? Where's Vicky? Vicky. She was here. Okay, Nathan. Make, um, make some noise, Nathan, for your mother. <laughs> Nancy Smith. Oh, there's Victoria right there. Yay. And Nancy Smith. Nancy. Um, Richburg, where are you? Back there. Way back there. Greg Zagloba, where are you? Back there. I'm, I'm going to interrupt this part of it to show you, Greg, if you are interested in purchasing any of this artwork, which would be great if you do, can you imagine how exciting it would be to have one of these on your wall every time you pass by it? You can remember this wonderful day. All 100% of the proceeds goes to the artist. Okay, and I'll explain why in a minute. But See that gentleman back there in the blue shirt? That's great. So if you want to buy anything, he has the change. <laughs> okay, now we have Mary Merritt. Where's Mary? She's back there. Um, now we have the Bamsey. That whole wall is from Bamsey. Okay, that's so impressive. It's a wonderful program over in um, Middleborough. And we have representatives here today. Thomas, where are you? Thomas Mello. Oh, did he leave? Oh, he was here all morning. Oh, boy, OK. Um, Stephen Saunders, I know you're here. Somebody. Where's Stephen? OK, he was here, too. And who else is here from Bamsey? You know, they had a parking problem, so some of them couldn't stay. OK, well, we welcome all of you. Um, did I miss any artists? <clears throat> Great, okay. Now, I explained that the artists get 100% of the proceeds of the sales of their painting because we were fortunate enough to have the Brockton Cultural Council give us a grant to work with this program. And because of the grant, we were able to purchase And some of the things that you don't see, which is all of the equipment it takes to hang these paintings, all of the wiring, the hardware, the frames, a lot of them didn't have frames, so we were able to make this a pretty impressive um, exhibit because of the Brockton Cultural Council. And guess what? We are fortunate enough today to have a member of the Brockton Cult Cultural Council with us. And her name is Deb Hodges Pabon, and she's like to say a couple of things. Greetings. Uh, my name's Deb, and I am a relatively new member to the Brockton Cultural Council. So I don't know a lot about the great work that we've done, but I do know what the impact of arts 
to my soul is. And I am very grateful for each and every one of the artists, poets, creators, creatives, who have given so selflessly, selflessly of oneself to share their talent with us. Also, I really want you to know that the Brockton Cultural Council, like the upcoming grant cycle is this fall. So please check us out on the website um, and think about ways that you can bring something as spectacular as this uh, to Brockton. We appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. And I'll continue with the Brockton theme. I'd like to introduce the director of this lo lovely library. Look at this space, Paul Engel. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, uh, Mark Lindy Chair, who is actually filming this for Brockton Community Access, uh, it's my honor to welcome you to the Brockton Public Library today. This is real applause. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, this is the third opportunity I've had to uh, partake in this event. Um, um, and what I've been doing for all three, and I did this this morning, is I get here before everybody shows up. Usually I come in here to set up the PA and stuff like that. And I just spend a minute to, to by myself in this room just to really check it out, you know, look at the art and read some of the poems that are on the wall. And I've got to say that this is perhaps the most moving event that we do in this library every year. And it's a powerful experience when the artists get to meet the poets who have written poems inspired by their art. And I just wanted to say thank you to the poets and thank you to the artists uh, for contributing and, and, and really just raising up the level of, of community in, in Brockton and, and, and surrounding towns. Um, Philip Hesaurus is a, a dynamic force in this. He, this wouldn't happen without Phyllis, Phil, Philip. Oh. Yeah, Philip. <laughs> and, 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 and Sandy, thank you for all of your help and, and work throughout the years. <laughs> close by saying, Deb, you'll be seeing more from the Brockton Public Library uh, through the Cultural Council, and we look forward to working with you. Uh, everybody have a great time, and I'm turning this over to... Well. <laughs> Thank you. What a nice group to work with, I'll tell you. It's very pleasant. Okay. Now, I'm going to introduce the other co-founder of Soaring Without Limits, and he is the CPO. Poetry. poetry. He's our chief poetry um, officer, Philip Hosaurus. First of all, does everybody have a booklet? Because this is how we're going to be pairing up the poets. And let me just say, I am humbled and honored to call myself a Brocktonian today. This, really, it, it's, I'm just, I'm just over the moon that I can say I'm from Brockton and that we're putting on this event. Um, so we're going to start with the thank yous. Thank you to the director of the Brockton Public Library Mr. Paul Engel. Although he's not here today, we want to thank Tim Reed, who, who got us all the art and all the poems, and we got to put them um, in the book. He set the whole thing up for us. OK, so this is really important. This booklet that you see was produced by Brockton High School. The 
of Brockton High Graphic Communications Department under the direction of Hao Wen and student leader Isaac Dominiquez. They put this whole book together. We sent them all the poems, we sent them all the photographs, and they produced this booklet. So. And I want to thank Mr. Mark Lindy, General Manager of the Brockton, K Brockton Community Access, for filming this so that all Brockton can share in what we're doing. Of course, we want to thank the poets and the artists, but most of all, for everyone who came to partake, to be elevated in this artistic expression. You are validating the artists today. We know what they go through. Um, I'm gonna put somebody on the spot and have them come up and speak for a minute on um, what they went through. So, Mary Merritt, would you please come up? Mary, Mary Merritt is one of our contributors, and I'm so... So I'll make it short and sweet. In 2008, I had a car accident. I suffered a head injury that was undiagnosed for seven months. I had no help. So I had to find my own help, and I was able to get into a Brockton Rehab Group, a Braintree Rehab Group that met once a month is the group that helped me. They all had different injuries, different disabilities, but they all had something valuable to offer to me to help me get through. They had ideas, <coughs> they had strength, they had support, and more than anything, understanding of different things. I could leave my job, which was no problem, but I couldn't get home. I didn't cook for two years. I didn't know what to pay a bill was like. I kept a lot to myself. I used to be the social person. I became the wall person who as far a conversation as I possibly could. And I took the course speaking photography through words from them. And that's how I started my journey of meeting Phil at one of the um, events. And I've continued onwards. And yes, even through the difficult times and some rough days when I can't find a word, I don't care. I just live my life to the fullest I can and I just go onward, and I hope that everybody in here does the same thing, because it's not easy, but we don't walk in everybody's shoes, we walk in our own, we can just help them along. So thank you. Yeah. I'd like to introduce one more person, Karen Page Dash. Um, I actually have epilepsy. Um, I was one of the rare cases where I wasn't diagnosed till I was about 38, had a massive grand mal, and then um, I was seizing like complex partials about between 40 and 60 times a day. So to control it, they, I had to have brain surgery. So I had a left temporal lobectomy in 2006, and then in one way, post-surgery, it was great because in some ways I came back because there's a solid like two or three years of my life that I don't remember what I did, where I was. I had the same conversation over and over and over again. Um, I mean, I can tell you what state I was in, but that was about it. And then happily, post-surgery, I kind of came back, but it's taken me a long time to slowly but surely remember things and there's certain things I will never remember and certain things I just can't do like remember people's names I'll remember your face <laughs> and that's about it but art has been one of the saving graces for me just being able to express no matter what <laughs> has been a happy place for me and then being able to do this has also really helped because especially the poetry and seeing what other people read. And then also the, um, 
the meetings. Um, I know for me, being able to go in a group and see how what each of us is going through and know you're not alone. That was just huge for me. So thank you. All right. Is everybody ready for some poetry? Yes. First up, Luisa Clarici, please turn to page nine. And the artist is Vicki Carr. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Sandy. Um, I am very honored to be here, but I need to apologize to all of you because I am going to be running off. Uh, today is a really special day for a friend of mine in my novel writing group. We've been workshopping his novel for many years now, and his book has just come out, and this afternoon is his launch party. So I know you writers know the great happiness in that, and I can't miss sharing that with him. So I am going to be running out. Very few things would cause me to leave this group, and I'm going to miss hearing most of you read, but I will read the book. Um, I, uh, I also didn't get a chance to meet you, Vicki. I wanted to tell you how much I love your photograph. It really inspired me. And the little girl in the photograph, and I've named my uh, poem Wonder Woman. She wants to fly, but remembers leaving wings in a previous incarnation. She wants to stand on top of a tree for a better look into the tunnel of the universe. But her feet are grounded in a multitude of sins like living, breathing, knowing. Yet her eyes are moving, warmed and relit by sunlight from God's orb. And only her smile has freedom, can lift her up into a bird's view of the sky. But freedom is an unused talent a gift given to the creatures of Earth in a brown paper bag. Now warm and sticky, like an old peanut butter sandwich, it doesn't even look good anymore. But she takes a bite and finds from her view on top of the sky, everything looks different from here. The world is a sculpture of past, present, and future, all melted into one power, lives created and fashioned in trees in the heart of a flower, in cities of smog and cement, and mountains dwelling in the footsteps of the moon. She dances on treetops and swims with the clouds. Her smile lifts her into realms of hidden vision where playfulness is the key that still opens the door. She wants to fly. Thank you very much, Louisa. Another hand for Louisa and Vicki. Next stop. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. This little girl is one of my grandnieces, and she's the granddaughter of my cousin who is blind. And he found this wonderful woman, and he has three children and now grandchildren. Next up, please welcome Deb Hodges Probone. Turn to page 12. Artist Tara Driscoll. Is Tara here? I have not had the opportunity to meet the wonderful artist. Uh, the poem is called For Tara. Beautiful yellow flower, your center is rich like the earth, wholesome 
and peaceful, an obvious sign of vitality, the heart of your energy, the beat of your existence. Yellow flower, your petals are vibrant like the sun, a series of rays that come together, forming a crown on the earth, displaying its glory as a source of fertility. Yellow flower, your green leaves provide nourishment that allows you to flourish through air for breath, water to quench my thirst. Yellow flower, your stem is upright as a reminder of your dignity. Respect is required for all life forms as a creation of the divine. I love you, beautiful yellow flower. Thank you, Deb. Another hand for Deb and Tara. Next up, please welcome Mr. Jim Bronson and poet, I mean artist, I'm sorry, Sandra Madden. fearful the print would be extremely small, so I'm not going to read it from the book. <laughs> Witnessing sundown, ice-glazed sentinels surrender to a darkening January sky, hours after a wintry pilgrimage created frozen footprints, forged a windy path to a weathered granite slab, its inscription barely legible. Stiff breezes stir stubborn oak leaves while I listen to the timeless crunch of snow, nature's echoes in Paul Winter concerts. On a solitary visit, I ascend the knoll, pause in lengthening shadows of late afternoon at a nearby monument, murmur a prayer, and wonder, what if we didn't have to go? Thank you, Jim. Another hand for Jim and Sandra Madden. Next up, please welcome Mr. Lewis Fox and photographer Victoria Carr. Thank you all for letting me participate. Uh, when I was looking through the site at all the artwork, this photo, Nathan, Nathan and Dino jumped out to me. It's a visually obvious link. Um, it made me bring up memories of my uncle who spent most of his years in a wheelchair but was probably the strongest man that I know. Um, so I hope that I can get through this okay. Um, I, knew, eight, 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 sorry. I knew a man in a wheelchair and when he wasn't in a wheelchair he was in a bed. It was not a bed made of luxurious items like fine linens, good company, or even peaceful sleep. It was however a bed to be envious of built on resiliency, respect, and relief. There was no way for me to understand those things at the time. Sometimes I ponder on my understanding of them today. Once I stole a Marlboro 100 from his neighbor and lit it up in his bathroom while everyone was outside waiting for the ice cream truck. After four or five suffocating puffs, I threw up in his toilet. He never scolded me for it, but he knew. The stench of smoke and vomit lingers long and deep. He understood humility more than most. Before he was in a bed in a chair, he was young. He used to run with a limp because one of his legs was slightly shorter than the other. I don't know which, it really doesn't matter. I can picture him now, refusing to slow down as he would round corners, the grinding gears of his brace screaming for a greasing. I knew a man in a wheelchair. His words are carved into my chest, a scar tissue fossil reminder from a dinosaur of a man, and of a time I had no way of knowing would linger so long and deep in the face of the sometimes unpleasant stench of life. Thank you.
Thank you, Lewis. Another hand for Lewis. And Victoria. Please welcome up to the mic. On page 17, <laughs> Dr. Joseph Polycape and artist Vanessa Tompkins. Sewing like a palm tree. I am traveling there all alone in that far away breezy island. I hear the birds exhibiting an enticing tone in that alluring green where I'll take asylum. The yellow moon color fills the clear waters. I wish we were here together to eat ice cream, escaping such a world of laughter. This place, it is like a dream. This, this is such a shiny day. Enjoy the intensity of the, of the consuming sun. Repentant, I had to run away. I felt without you, life is done. I find solace here in such a, a sparkling stream. The breezy blue sea is beautiful, more attracting than it seemed. Show me your invisible face. Be dutiful. The sky is translucent. If you hide behind the palm branches, I hope to see you. The birds land singing on the tree, seeking coolness on the brown tips. Tall tree unfolds away. Like you, I love Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Joseph Polycape. Next up <clears throat> on the mic, please welcome Mr. Rick McIntyre. Two poems. The first poem is on page 25 with artist Sandra Madden. And the second poem is on page 31. With artist Gregory Zagloba. I love the art. Now I can pretend to be in that Alfred Hitchcock movie. Bird <laughs> uh, I'm going to read the poems in reverse numerical order because funny story about writing a poem about a relationship when the relationship is really new. Um, Gregory, your photo's lovely. The relationship sank in two months. So sorry. Um, picture this story of us. Two picture puzzled us somewhere shelved, thrown together in rubber banded abandonment. We are described by their outsides, boast 10,000 piece puzzle but nothing can live this long without losing pieces of themselves along the way, mourning a wholeness lost. An old faded wagon that wandered too far from wherever it started, tired wheels resting on boards from its back, and a lake with a heart too full of empty spaces. An unlikely pair of images, perhaps, until the days when the walls of boxes broke down and their pieces ran together. There were so many pieces in common, even the mismatched witnessed their pieces adapt themselves to differences, strange contours nestling within each other's space, 
corners and edge pieces in support of what makes of each other's beauty a picture larger than both of the two. The art of the unlikely pair, old wagon rests soft on the surface light of a lake, calmed by the idea of being completed. Another season begins around this picture, improbable and new. Everything about it makes sense. Is a really dangerous question if you ever go out with a poet to say, do you ever think you write a poem about me? <laughs> Just wait till the breakup. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I will. <laughs> Several, probably. Okay, this is for uh, the, the, the picture, lovely picture by Sandra Madden, uh, Contrast. His wife, red tulips in front of a length of time, Lives change, nothing ends. Whoa. Another hand for Rick McIntyre. <laughs> Sandra Madden and Gregory Zagloba. Please welcome to the mic, Miriam O'Neill. Page 35, artist Mary Merritt. Hi, everybody. Um, I unfortunately just had an emergency phone call, so I also will not be able to stay to hear all of your poems. Um, but I did have a chance to come early and read everything, and I have the book, so um, thank you, Phil, for inviting me to be part of this. And um, I'm sorry that I have to leave after I read, but life just gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> And I want to thank Mary for this beautiful photograph that I found so inspiring. Um, I told her that my sons wore Oshkosh overalls when they were that age. So it was like looking back into my own life. Thank you, Mary, for that beautiful photograph. This is called No Fear. At 10, I was embarrassed by affection. I ducked the hand that reached to touch when I passed her in the kitchen. A peck on the cheek, all I'd allow of sweetness. She'd tell anyone who'd listen I'd been born in early winter, but was her summer dumpling. All honey gleam. Think of frogs in the pond and cicadas clicking in the trees I climbed with no fear. If I had been a pilgrim's child, born on the speedwell, she'd have had to name me Oceanus after the Atlantic, or fear, for all she knew about the world where we were headed, might have given me one of those names as talisman. Instead, I was born near farm and field, Dressed in denim, my bare toes gripped each branch and burl as I climbed higher to see things in the distance. I think, those day, I think of those days, now I'm 60, when her mind's wires scramble. I kiss her and remember what she might have named me before she settled on Daniel, the man in the lion's den who waited out the night in prayer and lived till morning. Let the lions of despair snap at my heels. It doesn't matter. I was a boy whose mother loved him, who sailed the ocean of her, who arrived among the living with no fear. Another round of applause for Miriam and O'Neill. 
and Mary Merritt. Please welcome to the mic Kayla Navarro Horando, page four, artist Kevin Korab, and also page 10, Victoria Carr. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, I believe this is my third time here, so I'm still nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> I should be familiar with everybody. So I write really raw, so these next two are actually like real life events. So I would like hit a really bad time in my life, and I just use words to get it all out. Um, so I'm going to read number four first. It's called Rare Disseverment. A mirror reflection of a little me. She cemented her mind of what could never be. Truth drips tears of a thick red river. Pass of a struggle upon a staircase. You can see my pain ahead. And success, she lives inside the yellow-heeled skin. And this mirror now sees my identical twin. But does he above see me as a whole sin? While my mirror is seeing my life dripping of a red paint, the little me sees what's really there, vital fluid, in which it flows out of our skin and onto the pavement. But we're separated through this mirror, but also in time. She's the past, and I am now heading to the future. We share pain, our pain. We climb together the staircase, one by one through the red paint and onto the gold road ahead. Our struggles create a strengthening power to close doors behind us and never look back. And these steps we took to climb to the beyond, and these, these are the steps that I took to leave the little me to rest. And she'll never be lost, but deep within, she'll always be with me. She is the new me. number 10 and this one's like really personal so if I cry I'm sorry um, Victoria when I saw this picture like um, in Brockton there's a street called North Cary and inside there's woods there and when I was a kid I was about 14 there was a couch just like this so this picture hit me immediately I named it North Cary <clears throat> can you hear that noise the noise surrounded by crackling trees and anger. And can you feel that hair lifting breeze? Goosebumps and terrorized memories stain your memory. But yet I pass by every day. I remember walking along with you into the lost woods, but the open lands of unknown. Your hands assured me safety. But you had that devilish smirk that I should have noticed before, but why didn't I know? But yet I still pass by every day, and you crushed my whole spirit, and let alone my whole body. That couch in the middle of North Cary, Hidden Woods, you left me there, cold, bloody, and ashamed, blaming myself. You should have known better. But yet I still pass by every day, and you lived on, forgetting, and I heard stories about other girls, but I couldn't have warned them. It was me who started this, and you could never let this end, because every day I still pass by North Cary. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Another hand for Kayla. and Kevin Korab and Victoria Carr. Next up on the mic, Mr. John Hogerson, page 13, artist Jimmy Kahn. Once again, Phil, thanks for the invitation to participate in this event again this year. It's greatly appreciated. Um, 
This event is like a taser to whatever muse has been assigned to me by the powers that be, because I always find the art that one has to choose from very difficult to select the piece that actually is going to hopefully produce something that has something to say. Finding beauty. If you study the brown and blue wings of a cavalier butterfly cruising amid a field of willing wildflowers, their pliant petals opening at its approach, if you visit the mecca of your restless dreams where penitent pine trees climb ancient monastic mountainsides and the blue sea below is clear and pure, if you gaze upon the face and form of your lover mesmerized by their fine symmetries lying so close to your timid touch, covered only by early morning light. Do you think you have found the elusive beauty coveted by our ill-fated forefathers, the beauty we ourselves cannot define within the poverty of our unworthy vocabulary? Come closer. Allow me to whisper in the tunnel of your ear the soft and harsh eternal echo of flawed flesh and stained soul. This search never ends. <laughs> you forget I'm on page 29, Phil. <laughs> um, this next poem, I would simply say as a cautionary word, to those of you who are into DIY, do it yourself, don't try this repair at home. It's called Broken Heart Repair, page 29. In order to protect her fickle heart from being stolen and broken again by another callous but seductive liar, she cauterized the caustic cracks with gin, gorilla glued the pieces, and stitched them very carefully with razor sharp barbed wire. Thank you. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Please welcome to the mic. Oh, another hand for John Holberson. <laughs> Please welcome Alice Cochemba, page 39. Artist Karen Page Dash. Thank you. Thank you, Phil, for including me. And um, it was so wonderful to come and to meet my artist um, and uh, to say just a couple of things. Um, some of you know that I got into poetry because I was hit by a line drive at a baseball game and lost the ability to read and work and drive. So poetry was my way back into the world. And um, I talked to Karen about the inspiration for this poem and several of the poets have said, it stirs up things that you, you don't even remember that you know. And um, this was about at the uh, first anniversary of the Parkland high school uh, shooting, and um, the job that I left with my head injury, I had been a um, on-call psychiatric social worker at a uh, local hospital, and half of my time I was trying to get guns out of people's houses in dangerous situations, and it wasn't just people with mental illness, it was the families who were afraid to take the guns out of the home. So I did some research, um, and I'm going to just say, um, you, you, can, you can read along, but um, a red flag law is a gun violence prevention, prevention law that permits police or family members to petition a state court to order the temporary removal of firearms fr from a person who may present a danger to others or themselves. Because of the students, really, that led this. Florida is now one of 13 states with red flag laws, 
19 states failed to pass any restrictions on gun ownership since the Parkland shooting. And this is the epigraph. Red flags. On February 14, 2018, 17 people were killed and 17 wounded at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Nicholas Cruz fired over 150 bullets in six minutes from his legally owned AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. Cruz had threatened his mother and brother with this same gun, killed and tortured animals, and had been aggressive towards classmates, resulting in his expulsion. The day before the shooting, Cruz flooded his, a girl with texts, phone calls, and photos of old scars of where he had cut himself, pleading with her to be his valentine. Red flags. He's the quiet guy in math, the one who's bullied on the bus, the one whose mom just died, the one with many guns. Pop, 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 pop. This is not a drill. He's the guy who just got dumped, the one they just kicked out, who kills lizards just for fun, the one with many guns. Pop, pop, pop. This is not a joke. He's the guy who couldn't cry, who slit his wrists when demons raged, who saved dead squirrels' tails, the one with many guns. Pop, pop, this is not my life. Sulfur sours the air, sirens shrill and scream. I look him in the eye, the one with just this gun. Pop, this is not my blood. Thank you, Alice. Another round for Alice, please. And Karen Page Dash. Next up on the mic, Mr. James G.H. Moore. Page 28, artist, Sandra Madden. frame of mind. At first you see only the bright lower third of the photo. Foreground light, golden, wheat, grasses, bleached all summer by the sun, caressed by a small breeze, its motion frozen by the lens like a thought that stops and you don't know where it wants to go, but it always comes back to the same moment and forces the eye to the middle ground, window in the triangle of the roof where no faces can be seen looking out but you want them to appear and cannot remember why the roof line sags a bit like a swayback horse ridden almost too many times across the tin roof you know is spotted with rust but cannot see clearly against the background trees laden with vines that reach out to the far side of the structure, barn or house or cottage to weave a green shape of desire or want or hope, waiting for a thought to finish under a translucent sky that offers the comfort of high light and free air, and you breathe it and think to heal. Okay, and now it is my pleasure to to introduce Philip Hasurus, um, page 36 and page 42. Page 36 for Linda Almer, uh, Almer, 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 and Karen Page Dash. Philip.
Linda and I go way back um, to the Brain Injury Association with the uh, support groups that were held. And um, when Sandra did the <clears throat> art and um, Linda uh, participated in almost every one. So when um, her picture came, I was really honored to um, write a poem about it. The name of the art is The Difference. The name of the poem is Weeping Through My Window Pane. See my backyard, weeping through my window pane. Thoughts wander when the summer breeze lays quiet and they shuffle unhurried around. What is life unto itself? The candle flickers to a silent world, casting shadows through timeless echoes of voices that cradles the night air. <clears throat> Not the willow tree that is sad, you say, but happy and free to lower its burden. Clock slumbers in aimless patterns, tells of moments that slip away, feels for a future within its grasp, hands achieve, tick, talk and silent prayers revolve. Gaze through glazed windows reflecting stillness within. We weep for knowledge within the willow tree, so sad, but so free. And always when uh, Karen Page Dash submits her art, it's like a free-for-all. Everybody's clicking on, I'll take this one, I'll take this one. So this is my first year doing um, a poem for Karen Page Dash. The name of the painting, Alone in My Thoughts. The name of the poem, Oh. Trapped, vulnerable, alone, fall deeper into void, escape, pulls you closer, fight inner strength, inner years, cold, distant, death lives without. Love traps you when you are vulnerable and alone. You fall deeper into the void when you try to escape. Oh, it pulls you deeper. For years you fight with inner strength, but you draw away cold and distant and find you cannot live with them or without them. Please welcome to the open mic or to the mic, Sheila, that, that, that's my poetry <laughs> hosting coming into. Uh, please welcome to the mic, Sheila Mullen Twyman. Twyme. Right Page six, artist Kevin Korak. Is Kevin Korak here? I have never met him. I was hoping to. Can I interrupt you for a second? I'll tell you why he's not here. Many of you know Arlene Korak, who's one of the founders of the Brain Injury Association in Massachusetts. Unfortunately, she passed away. The name of his painting was Pandemonium, and um, I sort of consider, consider this poem Pandemonium. It's called The Wedding. The 5 a.m. train awakens her before her arthritis does. She unbends her arms, her legs, strengthens her back and neck, inches out of bed. What is it she was going to do today? The wedding. The wedding's this afternoon at one. Laurel and Joe are getting married. Laura's so pretty with long wavy hair, like hers when she was young. Can't remember what she's going to wear to the wedding. Put water on for tea, toast a piece of brown bread. Not the brown dress. She wore the brown when Laurel introduced Joe to the family. Can't wear the same dress twice. Such a nice family. She goes to the bureau, 
takes a tattered photo from the mirror's edge, kisses the man smiling from the rumble seat of a roaster. Love you, Ed. He would have liked the blue dress. She lays the blue silk on the bed, finds her white gloves with tiny pearls at the wrist, the lace handkerchief with embroidered violets that the Meals on Wheels lady gave her for her 87th birthday. Look at the time. What has she been doing all morning? Can't be late for the wedding. The blue dress, 23 buttons down the front. Doesn't notice she starts with the wrong buttonhole. Doesn't notice one side of her collar's higher than the other. Dabs a little rouge on each cheek, combs a comb, runs a comb through dry white wisps. Needs to sit a bit before the wedding. Peers into the cabinet under the sink. A little sherry's left. She's been looking forward to this for wedding, this wedding for days. A little sherry would be nice. She eases into Ed's old stuffed chair, balances the wine glass, and the arm doily snaps on the television, just in time. Laurel's already halfway down the aisle. The organ's playing longer, and Joe is waiting, smiling. <laughs> Another hand for Sheila Mullenstein. <laughs> Staying with the Kevin Korab theme, let us welcome Joyce Wilson, page one and two. Thank you so much. <clears throat> the first one, Rolling River of My Heart, reminded me of uh, thoughts I was having in conversation with a good friend of mine who had a heart attack in January and the tangled lines and um, all of that reminded me of what she had been describing. Rolling river of my heart. If snow falls and its shapes dissolve as fears will thrill and dissipate, why is her heart gone so awry and lost its rhythmic tune. The driven ship was passion tossed. Its cables always held their course until an undercurrent forced a cruel abandonment. At the abyss, she took a glance to see the tangle of her veins like seaweed colored from a storm and circuit dreams gone wrong. The heart for years, a source of trust, until this time, the beauties pushed, a dam unloosed, furies convulsed, and brought the power down. Beholding such imprisonment, the vigilant must turn away in deference to the verdict given and what they know today. And I really like the uh, freedom in the next painting. And I, I love the titles that Kevin Korob gives to his paintings. They're very inspiring. Um, Blue Sky, Take Me Away. What is freedom to me? Like lyrics of a song, I follow mesmerized. Like waves of blossoms born aloft from storm-tossed trees. Or thunderhead, black mane to cling to, I am hauled, wind-burned wind and glorious, prepared to take my nerve between the teeth and fly, skydiving sky amateur without a cord or shoot, until I grow with it, divine blue emptiness that leads me on but dares not hold me down. Thank you, Joyce. Another hand for Joyce and Kevin Korak. Next up on the mic, I would like to welcome Miss Adeline Ellenberg. Unfortunately, through a glitch, we're trying to figure it out, she did not make it into the book. But we have the artist and the painting, which he will be pointing to, Greg Zagloba. Okay, and... We have it right here in case anybody misses it. So please welcome Adeline Ellenberg. Thank 
you. It's a pleasure to be here. The painting is called Three Casitas, painting by Gregory Zagloba. Z- Excuse me, I'm sorry. Angry skies, hot yellow sand today. Hammer together houses of our village, tilt their long nose, pastel paint faces under the skinny swaying trees. Stigging breezes fling hot sand today. Our squinting eyes watch everything from the splintery seats of our fishing boat. No bites today. Fish swim elsewhere today. On the shore, no laundry left outside flapping, no kitchen fires burning, no children's voices ringing, Where is everyone? Time has stopped while a storm brews. I pray no harm comes to our village while everyone rests inside, takes a siesta, hides from the sun's fierce embrace and the spitting hot winds. We await the peaceful, sweet cool of starry moonlight and the good luck it brings. But for now, Come, fishy, fishy, come hook yourselves onto me. My village is hungry. Another hand for Adeline and Greg. Next up on the mic, please welcome Mr. David Surrett, page 20. Page 20, artist Sandra Meth. So this was an easy choice. I, I taught skating for years and years and years, and my group was always that never had skated before. And I had a five minute guarantee and no crates. So this was, this was perfect for me. Crates. Oh, and, and the, the, um, the name of the photograph is, Do I Have to Wear Girl Skates? <laughs> so crates. You've worn your favorite Spider-Man hat and the sweatshirt you love best, black dog wigs ready on your chest, but you've been told to sit there and rest. You look down on your snowy knees, the ice on your gloves begins to freeze. You know just what's to blame for your defeat. It's the girl skates tied to your feet. (laughs) But the ice doesn't know boys from girls, doesn't care about skates, black or white. It's blades and balance and grace, but mostly getting up, reclaiming your space. So off you go, knees bent and head up straight. Let one skate push away the ice and tell the other foot not to wait. You won't even need those stupid crates. Another hand for David Surratt. And Sandra Madden. Up next, please welcome Mr. Bill Alberti. Two poems, page 16, artist Howard Tremonte. Page 22, artist Sandra Madden. Thank you, Phil. And thanks for I'm honored to uh, be here as a reader. Uh, Sandy, I need assistance in reading this poem. If you would come here forward with me. I need some help. This is, this is better, yeah, this is better. Um, I was born in Brooklyn, raised in, in New York, and uh, a couple of years ago when, uh, when Karen uh, did uh, her painting, I chose it because she did the naked artist who hangs out in Times Square and Broadway. And uh, interesting to know, Phil, uh, a friend of mine goes to New York periodically. I said, you gotta find the naked artist. He's on Broadway and Times Square all the time. 
I'm going to Xerox a page with Karen's picture and my poem. And I want you to give it to him. And darned if he did. And he and, and the naked artist uh, had a picture of himself, and he signed the naked cowboy. Am I saying naked artist? The naked cowboy. He signed a picture. He signed a picture for us. So when I saw this uh, Yankees Boston uh, artwork, which is uh, hanging on the wall right over there, um, again the affinity to New York. I just couldn't uh, couldn't stop. Traditional foes. The painting displays the epic rivalry, New York versus Boston, Big Apple versus Bronx, uh, Beantown, Yankees versus Red Sox. In the background, the Sitco sign peers into the park, its redness aligned with the socks on Fenway's green monster scoreboard, creating traditional Christmas-like colors. This day's battle has yet to begin. No balls or strikes, no hits or runs or errors, no score or prisoners taken, except for the Bambino. But as a childhood Yanks fan, I must point out the bombers from the Bronx lead the war 27 to 9, <laughs> despite the long-awaited recent duck boat parades. <laughs> And a hand for Sandy, my assistant here. Um, the other poem is on page. Did you say 22? Okay, thank you. Beautiful photograph um, by uh, Sandra, which is uh, sitting up here with some of our other photographs. Comfort and decay. Old trucks are put out to pasture like racehorses that no longer run. Neither get buried in cemeteries, their owners tired of wakes and funerals, wreaths of flowers and tear-streaked eulogies. Sometimes I think beauty has been exhausted, but then I see the photo of an old truck abandoned in a field, grass bending around the rotted tires and rusty body like green flames. And I recognize antiques hold an ancient grace that helps us accept the blessings found in the majesty of decay, deterioration, disintegration, comforting us in the face of the inevitable. Thank you. Another hand for Bill Alberti, please. Please welcome to the mic, Mr. Richard Berg. Artist Tracy Travers, who's right there. Give a hand for Tracy. Page 38. Wonderful to see everybody here. The artwork is spectacular. Yes. This is my oh, second year writing about Tracy's art, and I saw this and I just it just grabbed me. Uh, happiness. Filling your life with happiness is the easy part. Living without it can be most difficult. If you're not open to it, it just might pass you by. Thank you. We'll let him get back to his, to his seat. <laughs> Another hand for Richard Berg and Tracy. Next up, please welcome Chris Zaramba, page 34, artist Mary Merritt. Thanks for having me back again. And um, the painting on page 34 isn't the right one. So this is Mary's picture that I wrote to. So you can check your books. <clears throat> it's, called, it's called Rose Hips, and so is my poem. 
<clears throat> Wind howling dragged me from my dreams. Snow stopped, covered everything it seems. Dark, yet light enough to see the outlines of plant tips. And outside my door, still dressed in red, stands my favorite plant, rose hips. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Another hand for Chris Zaramba. And Mary Merritt, she's right over there. Next up, please welcome Wayne Craig Fredericks, page 15, artist Janetta Johnson. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, Jojo Owl made the cover. So there we go. Uh, this is my fourth year here. And in addition to thanking Janetta, uh, the previous three artists really all helped. Cause there's a series here. When my anthology is put together, you'll be able to read them all at once. But if you've been here all four years, you look back and you'll, you'll get more out of it. OK, here we go. Poet Owl and Supermoon. Haiku about the moon. Look, they're right. It's super bright even through thin, cl thin clouds. Hey, Jojo Owl here. Super cool to meet you. I'm a poet owl writing rhyming couplets and haiku. Only the lonely. Who sang that? Who? Roy Orbison. Like, yeah, right, he knew. Perched now in a cherry tree. Good branch, good height. Super moon cuts into dark. You wouldn't know it's past midnight. The hunt commences, thinking something different, not squirrel again. Thank you very much. Another hand for Wayne. And I don't know if we should thank him for not writing about squirrels. I mean. Next up on the mic, please welcome Mr. Roger Boucher. Page 24, artist Sandra Madden. Thank you, Phil. Um, This poem about stone walls, I think, um, I relate to because it's um, a walk in the woods. You know, I think sometimes with the trees all grown up and you're looking at it n now, you kind of sit down maybe in a place that looks comfortable, maybe a rock, and, um, and you wonder about what went on here. Uh, Maybe tea and peaches, wine and crackers, cheese. Um, this, this poem seemed to speak to me, so um, it's called Stone War and um, photograph Sandra Madden. Thank you. Um, moments of stone, crisscross New England stone. Crisscross New England. Stone walls reminiscent of a yesterday's footprint and a future stamp on the memory of those who carved out a home from the backwoods of promise, dragging and carrying stones to homesteads and farms using rudimentary tools and brawn. Today's land, overgrown from days gone by, displays a simple necessity of beauty shouldered by the use of many hands, thigh high, Biggest stones on the bottom, the two handers laid to rest on the top. New England has a landscape of natural resources shaped by man, showing deterioration like many of the great wonders. Some stone walls are shabby, fallen asunder, laying as a passion in history. Stone walls intersect as lattice work on a woodland canvas where squirrels traverse 
as though the stone highway were created for them. <laughs> Another poem with squirrels on it. <laughs> Thank you. Another round of applause for Roger Boucher. Um, as Roger said, he's participated in all four events. A lot of people here have participated in four events. The next poet has participated in every event, and we are honored to have him here today once again. Please welcome from Suffolk University, Dr. Fred Marchant. Page 40, artist, Karen Page Dash. I am honored, and I'm honored by, by the invitation every year, and I'm honored by the art, the art that surrounds us, and I'm honored by a microphone that will go down. <laughs> All, right. All right, there you go. How's that? Um, yeah, I am, and so thank you, Philip. Thank you all, and thank you, Karen. This is not the first time you know, uh, with Karen's work. But, but I thought I'd, I would just say a word about how, the, as an example, really, of how this work spoke to me. And as Alice Kachemba said, it's always a surprise. You begin with one thought and you end up with another. I thought, oh, I clearly am going to write a, a poem about that cane in this painting. And it is, and it's in the poem. But it's, but it, you know, the more I, I sort of sketched and noodled around, well, I, I, I started to, two things happened. I started to hear a rhythm, and I knew that the rhythm was deeply connected to those crosswalks that Karen seems to be interested in right now. And in my painting, if you will, or the painting I'm writing in response to, and one that Alice responded to, those crosswalks were there. And I just want to praise the layout, the, the, the beautiful design of that um, of background of the poem is itself like a crosswalk. and. Um, that's a little bit of the rhythm, too, of this poem. Um, the painting is called Getting Around, and the poem is called The Satchel. To be and be around. To step and cross. To trust the white paint. And think the lines look like boards. Maybe one of them rotten, and to leave the sweet blue corner, to study what is right before you, to look neither left nor right, but down, always down, asking your leg to lift the next foot, while your cane, a good stick, tilting a friend along the way, you, climbing up and stepping down, this step, then that, and time, the ladder painted where you walk, with your blue sleeves rolled up, the satchel of new poems held tight over your hip and just under your heart. Thank you, Fred. Another hand for Fred Marchand and Karen Page Dad. So we are coming to the end of our program. And before I introduce our last poet, um, I want to thank director, Mr. Paul Engel, for giving us this wonderful space. Mr. Mark Lindy, General Manager of Brockton Community Access, for recording this for Brockton. The Brockton High Communications Department for providing us with this wonderful book. To the poets and artists. Most of all, for everyone who came to listen, thank you. So in this world of chaos, 
that we're going through today. I can't think of a better way to end this program than having this next poet come out. She has the most soothing, pleasant voice. And I think that's how we want to end the program. Please welcome Nancy Brady Cunningham, page 23, artist Sandra Madden. soothing voice is going to be <laughs> saying naughty things if you just <laughs> stay up. Woo! I'll hold on to it. Thank you everyone, Phil, for inviting me again this year and all the poets, all the artists, and especially the spirit that fills this room, that love and attention and a warmth that comes together each year when we gather. Thanks to all of you. So this sign of an angel, uh, Photographer Sandra Madden. And um, I love the colors in this, the black and the pink together. Just terrific. Sign of an angel. Butterflies color the morning air constantly moving like the sun. Angels travel on shimmer light, heaven sewn into their great wings. Angels hover as messengers, offering solace to burdened hearts. But Dressed in pure white radiance, they'd frighten rather than soothe. So angels hide in clouds of butterfly flesh. Look into the colors flo fluttering on the wind. Behold the cloth of paradise billowing out. Thank you. Okay, once more for Nancy Brady Cunningham. Just a couple of uh, finishing up things. On the round table back there, we have a sheet for comments, which we would love to use in future publicity. There's also a sign-up sheet for your email address if you'd like to follow us. We also have a Facebook page under Soar Without Limits, Heal Through the Arts. And I think that's it. Anybody have any questions? Now, if you want to buy any one of these, and the artist is still here, you can just pay the artist. You don't have to go through the money changer back there. So, but thank you again for coming. This is, you make it a wonderful day. Thank you, everybody.